What's going on everybody, it's Max here, and today I am bringing you a video sponsored by Paradox Arc, the publishers of a game called Star Deus. This is an indie game with base building and colony simulation concepts, and I've seen a lot of people show the game off, but all they've been able to show is the construction of their ship, not actually the core gameplay, which is flying from system to system. I have pushed past the ship construction in the first hour and a half of playing this. I'm about 10 hours of gameplay into the game with three failed attempts to get out of the system, but this one is the one. We are able to actually push out of the system and see the rest of the game. So buckle up. We're going to take a look at Star Deus right now. All right. So we have built from the remains of our destroyed spaceship here. We've built a small little uh, craft with a couple of um, different elements that you're going to need as you play. So the core of your spaceship is actually your ship computer. And if this is destroyed, you lose the game. You're completely destroyed. You're out. So you have to protect this at all costs. Just like a lot of base building games like in RimWorld, you can build floors, you can build walls. All of this is in the build menu at the middle here under the structure elements. So we can build different walls types. We can build different doors as well. And I've built the basis of a pretty small ship. If you consider how much we had in this system here, we had a whole bunch to choose from. I've built a pretty small setup here. So power comes from your ship computer and it's actually routed through your computer through these little nodes on the ground, these floor sockets, which you can connect by using the connection tool. I've connected it to a bunch of different things here. This one's completely full with 24 out of 24 slots taken up. These little glowy things at the top here are your matter reactors. This is how you create power for your ship by typically burning um, steel plates or a bunch of different resources. I'm not exactly sure how you fuel a matter reactor with steel plates, but I guess this is the distant future where we've got space travel, so anything is possible. And uh, these connectors also allow us to connect up connectors to each other. So we're actually routing power through our ship by routing it through the connectors that you see around the ship there. Anything that isn't powered, I'm not powering it because I'm afraid that we don't, we can't actually produce the power required for it. So we've got some floor tiles here that if we powered them, they produce light. If I had enough electricity to do so, I think we're lacking. Oh, there we go. There, it lit up right there. Uh, so we can, we can have lit areas of our base and you'll see that flying around are our drones. These are your robotic companions on your ship that fly around and do most of the construction, most of the work around the ship area. And then in addition to that, you've got your humans here. So we've got Callie Queen Gregory here, who is not doing too hot. She's not particularly happy. Uh, I've found in the 10 hours or so that I've played the game, the beginning of the game is pretty brutal. You don't have access to the things to keep your colonists particularly happy. They are always sad all the time. She is bored times 82. So, you know, I don't even have the technology or the resources to get her out of that boredom yet. Uh, that's probably just something that we are going to have to research in the technology tree. So if we take a look at the tech tree which I definitely know how to get to by pressing T. Here is the tech tree as it exists in the beginning of early access. And at the very start of the game, you have access to all of the technology you see, which is kind of daunting. My first two or three attempts at this game were brought to failure because I went a little bit too far down technology trees that I didn't need to research, right? I wanted to get stuff like the reinforced floors and the reinforced walls, and I you know, grab this advanced construction technology, and then I didn't have the resources available to actually get the space travel technologies that I needed to leave our current system. So it was a process of trial and error. Now, the game does have a very basic beginner tutorial for you to learn from, but after that, you're kind of left on your own. And like a lot of games in the genre, you have access to a codex here that will tell you some information about each of the constructions that you can build, but that's about it. You don't, you're not given a lot of handholding in this game. You've got to figure it out. So learn from my mistakes and make sure when you're working on technology, if you pick up Stardeus, that you grab the technologies in the space travel, uh, the space travel section here, especially the bridge controls, which allow you to actually fly your ship 
and the thruster, which allows you to actually propel your ship through space. The other ones that are particularly important are the computing technologies. And that's because you have to build these computers in order to research technologies in the game. So you have to have a certain amount of permanent storage available to store technologies on your ship. And you'll notice if you lack these technologies, uh, this one being memory, that's how complex is this technology to research? If you don't have the memory available, your research will be much, much, much slower and far reduced in speed comparatively to, uh, to if you have the memory that you need. And this is where I got stuck my first time which was I didn't have the resources in space in our destroyed ship in order to build the computers that we needed to, in order to uh, to research the technologies that we needed to get going. But I think I finally have the game figured out and we can get going from here. One thing to keep in mind, the game, at least in the state that it was given to me, does not have a way to save and load saves. You can only save when you exit the game or if you exit to the operating system and you can only load your game if you have uh, a save available. So, so basically there's no auto saving, there's no quick saving, there's no saving yourself from a mistake in the version of the game that I've been given, which means that this is our one shot to get off of the, out of the system and into space. And I'm hoping that we can show that to you here. So where's Queen? Where are you at, Queen? Are you sleeping? She might be in bed. Okay, yeah, good. She's in bed. So I think what we need to do next is actually take off. We've got our ship bridge controls here that are hooked up to power. We have a thruster connected to the back of our ship. I have jettisoned the people that used to live on the ship here. They are all out in space. And it is worth noting that this uh, machine here, the stasis array, is where you get new people, new colonists. So every so often in about 18... 18 hours, we're going to get ourselves a new colonist or perhaps a new animal, it depends. Uh, it's it's completely random what comes out of the stasis array, but this is the game's way of always making sure that you have new people available to you. Now, I noticed something here, which is this door wasn't closing. Okay, it closed. I was, I was worried that it didn't have power, but it seems like we're good. I think what we do next is we go into the map. We got propulsion in our thruster, though we have one connected to our ship already, so I think we're okay. And I'm gonna go to the map. And here is the galaxy that we can travel through. Now, I think what we do is we click on Brack and we choose travel here. Okay, flight impossible. There are eight detached stations. Deconstruct or reattach stations first. Consult the sections overlay for further details, enabling the sections overlay now. Okay, so basically what that's telling us is, hey, you've got a whole bunch of stuff left in space here and you can't just leave it behind. You have to deconstruct it all. So I've got to go through and deconstruct each of these sections. Here I'm told there's a chair here that I might want. I don't want it. Go ahead and deconstruct that. And we'll have to deconstruct all of this. And I'm not going to put you through this. Don't worry. I'm going to fast forward through the deconstruction process by skipping uh, at three times speed. And we will come back once the deconstruction is complete. Okay, uh, it's been about 15 real life minutes at speed three to deconstruct the elements around our um, our ship. In the meantime, we started the advanced computing. I I'll say that yeah, was that was kind of a lot of sitting sitting around, kind of waiting for things to happen. But we can finally get going. So I'm going to go ahead and build up a few more disk modules because I think we're going to need them uh, in order to store new technologies. And then let's see now if we've got what it takes to get going. We want to head to Brack. Our ship, I think, is called the Satellite Death. Let's go ahead and travel. Ship is currently not operational due to 
forward direction is not set. You have to sh set it in the ship controls overlay. Okay, so ship controls overlay. I like that they bring this up for you automatically. I really dig that. Forward direction, let's get this right, is east. Okay. Now ship navigation. We have no bridge operator. I imagine that's something that'll happen when we when we set a direction, right? We've got no intersystem flight, no intergalactic flight. Maybe we have what we need. Let's go ahead and try going to BRAC now. Travel here. Course set to BRAC. Distance 2 million kilometers, probably. You'll be notified upon arrival. Sweet. And we're actually, like, moving. Like, really actually moving through space. I thought this was just going to be a warp, but it looks like we're going to... We're going to push through space, and as we're going, it looks <laughs> looks like we're picking up some stragglers around the side of the uh, the ship here. I'm kind of curious about our bots. Are our bots going to be there infinitely? Also, we're bringing behind us all the corpses <laughs> of anyone who's ever died on this ship before, which is kind of hilarious. That's really funny. But hey, we're going to pick up some of this stuff. I you know, could have sat here and grabbed all the gears. We could have grabbed all the copper wire. But if we double click on this, I think that's actually a lot. And uh, yeah, there's like 55 of them. You know what? I'm going to order this. Hopefully they're not too far out of uh, out of reach. The gears too, I think, were kind of important. There may be some other things and odds and ends that we've left behind. And in your gameplay, you might want to actually stick with it and pick those things up. But for the sake of being able to actually see the rest of the game, I wanted to push past it and... Uh, and do that. I am going to have our, our ships, or our little drones here, haul the goodies on the side of our ship here, just so that it's not clogging up the windows. We can kind of see outside. And, you know, in the meantime, we might even be able to make another thruster or two. I'm not sure how many we have. Let's put that here. I am by no means a spaceship designer. We have put thrusters on the back of windows. <laughs> Which I'm sure a real civil engineer would probably freak out at if he saw, but you know what? Uh, just nobody tell him, okay? Nope, don't. Let's let's keep it our little secret that we've done this. But hopefully the the thrusters added here will help the process go a little bit faster and get us to BRAC a little bit sooner. I don't actually know what the scale of speed is because this is literally my first time moving. I have no idea if BRAC is near or far or or anything, but we're gonna find out together. Uh, uh, you know, what, what that process looks like. Now, our new disk modules were finished, so I'm going to go ahead and connect those up to the power network. I'm actually kind of running low on power in this room, so I'm going to build myself, and I guarantee you this is not the way to do it, but I'm going to build myself a few more connectors here just so that we can connect these all up. And let's go ahead and increase the priority to of the thruster just to make sure that that actually gets done in a, you know, timely amount of time. You can see our constructors are constructing the, the connectors here. And what I'm going to have to do is disconnect this, connect this guy up to the network and this one. And then we can go ahead and throw our connections down for those disk modules. Now, we've got inefficient research because we don't have enough spare electricity. We're not producing enough in our matter reactors. So I'm going to go ahead and build a copy of the matter reactors. I do really like the right click controls in this game. It is just really easy to use. You can basically right click on anything and interact with anything you need to, right? Order deconstruction, relocate this, turn it off. I really, really like that element of the game. Uh, the UI needs a little bit of work. As you notice, like there's a whole bunch of buttons up here for you to toggle between some of these things. But I think, I think overall the UI just feels a little bit cluttered, but that's okay. That's okay. It's early access. These things can be improved and changed. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it is a one-person developer. This is a lot for a single person to build. This is a, a, a real feat. So let's connect these guys up. We're going to have to set them to use a certain fuel. I'm going to have steel plates, which hopefully I haven't just left behind, you know, 6,000. I probably have, honestly, but... Oh. And it looks like our ship has come to a halt. Is there a problem? I'm not quite sure. Let's connect another one of these. There we go. Okay. Maybe we couldn't go if one of our thrusters was damaged. I'm thinking that might be the case. We've got some extra stuff up here. I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct that. That's not really part of the ship area. Let's get rid of that stuff. And we can set our haul command to haul the items here. 
in the middle of our ship, we've got our storage unit where our bots are going and dropping stuff off at the storage unit. And we also have on board a shuttle, which I think in the future allows us to go off on expeditions and, uh, and launch expeditions here. There's a whole, if there's an explorable space object next to us, we can launch an expedition. We need the bridge controls to see objects in the star map and engines to travel in space, which we already have. So that's all good. Now we've got ourselves a random event, which is the dust storm. And the dust storm actually adds dust on top of your solar panels. So your solar panels uh, function a little bit worse. So we will have our bots clean this off after, you know, after they get too dirty. And that's, that's really not a problem at all. I'm kind of curious about this. It says that our, our health is really low. I think our people are eating. We've got a cocoa tree and coffee beans, or uh, sorry, a coffee tree and coffee beans going. We've got wheat growing as well as our cooking station is here for them to cook food. I did see them cook food. Unlike RimWorld, however, you can't immediately control your people. Uh, I can't tell them to go anywhere. If I right click, it just closes the menu. You can manually control your bots, which seem to be doing, to be honest, a lot of the heavy lifting around the around the colony. Your people are really just kind of like your the, the group of people that you're taking care of almost, right? Uh, I feel a little bit more in this game like an AI responsible for keeping people alive rather than like a, uh, you know, a, a colonist leader who's leading my colony. So that's an interesting difference in this game uh, compared to other games that I've played in the in the uh, in the genre. So we're close to a planet. Use a shuttle to start a mining expedition. Let's go ahead and do that. We're at BRAC. Enter planet. Um, okay, can't fit any more crew members. We'll take the Nantucket and launch, I think. Oh, we can see actually Brack in the background here in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Our robots are getting on board, it seems, onto the shuttle. And the shuttle is taking off toward Brack. So we're going to see what comes of that. I imagine we're going to be able to mine up some resources, grab some stuff from the planet. Uh, looks like we get a little bit of information about what is happening and when and how far they are along in their expedition, which is kind of cool. And then taking a look at the map here, this is just one planet, but we could go to Leontovich, which I don't know if we can even find out more information about it yet. Doesn't look like it. Maybe we can about Brack. Information. This is a planet. We could explore it. <laughs> okay. All right. That's what we're doing. Not much info there, though we can see our shuttle down there at the bottom. It looks like actually it's... It's heading toward the planet. That is really cool that you can see that as it's going. That's pretty sweet. On our colony, I'm going to have to connect our power up. There we go. We missed one right there. And we are 58% of the way through advanced computing. One thing worth noting is that in the technology tree, if you change technologies, you or, or stop researching a technology, you will lose your progress towards it. So you want to really choose these carefully I chose advanced computing because I find it to be really important for us in the research of technologies. It's kind of the core element of getting new elements for your ship, getting new access to, to new concepts on your ship. We've got to connect this to our connection here, refuel that for our steel plates as well. On board our destroyed ship, we also had a disassembler, which I haven't connected to the electricity grid because it used a lot of electricity and I was having some electricity problems. Now we might be able to connect it without problem. Let's go ahead and just give it a go. See if that's okay. I imagine this will deconstruct items that we actually feed to it, right? Processor settings, I think we can tell it, hey, disassemble X, Y, Z. And then we've also got a loom, which is used to create uh, clothing. And our colonists, if I'm not mistaken, are completely nude. So let's go ahead and give this a command. We'll have it create carbon fiber, I think from carbon, if I'm not mistaken. And then they can eventually craft that, I think maybe at the crafting station, eventually, once we have the technology to do it, to craft carbon fiber into clothing for them to wear so that they're not just completely naked. I think we just saw this robot pet our cat, Charlie. Uh, why we need to have a cat on board? I mean, do I have to answer that? It's obvious, right? They, they need some kind of of love and attention and, and care uh, with our colonists, just so that they're not completely lonely. And our ship is still flying to Nantucket. I am still on third time speed, if you're curious why things are moving so quickly. I just kind of want to get to 
the the meat and the bulk of the game. I'm really curious what we're going to find on this planet. 15 hours ago, we sent down Queen, who is a miner, as well as some of our mining bots as well. So we'll find out soon, I hope. In the meantime, what can we do? Let's take a look at some of the other buildings we can do. Uh, you had seen that there were bit pieces of the ship that had broken apart from each other. We could actually have used a winch hook and a winch anchor to connect them. And the connection is what actually built this small ship. We were able to piece together this section, this section, and this section that were all separate pieces in space and piece them together to one another, which was actually really cool. The other thing that we could do is we could build some teleporters if our ship was really large. I think we could build teleporters around our ship, I think. And they could teleport from one room to another, which is pretty cool. And it looks like our uh, our ship has arrived at the planet and they've actually found uranium, which is one of the resources. I don't think we need uranium right now, but uh, it is a resource that we can mine up. And while we're here, we might as well do it right, I guess. So we're going to let them mine that up. I would love if we cooked ourselves some more meals. I think that's what Aqua's working on right now is going to the cooking station and cooking some survival meals. There are quests in the game that give you access to greater technology. So you'll see here, establish food production is one of our quests. We have to produce 10 survival meals. And once we do that, we get access towards the recycling technology. So that's pretty nice. It's, it's a way that the game is sort of guiding you through a lot of the elements of what you need to do in order to succeed, in order to you know work your way out into space and, and explore. There are other random events that they've hinted at, like uh, pirate attacks, like attacks from different factions and different ships, all sorts of stuff. I don't have any weapons yet. And so maybe after we research advanced computing, we research some kind of defensive technology in order to, in order to fix that. I'm going to relocate this here. So it's a little bit more protected. This here is our particle accelerator. It has been uh, asked to gather water from the environment, wherever we're, wherever we're flying. And it is gathering water from whatever's out there in space and giving us access to fresh water, which is, I think, a pretty important element of this game. The other element that might be important is carbon so that we can get carbon fiber. But looks like Aqua is actually working on this. Can I increase the priority of cooking? I can. And I think I've increased this above the priority of the loom. Maybe after they build this carbon fiber, they're going to head here and cook us some more food. I'm assuming we actually have the base resources necessary to get food. Uh, I, I, I've i made the assumption that we have, I guess it's wheat, perhaps, for people to be able to cook survival meals. We can take a look, actually, and see what that looks like. Craft in the auto kitchen requires protein, which I sincerely hope we have. I'm not sure if there's a way to search for that. I sincerely hope we have protein, because if not, we're going to be in trouble. What's wrong, Aqua? Lax healing. Mood, negative 68. They're naked, which is not fun on a spaceship, to be honest. I bet it's pretty cold. They're pretty bored. There's nowhere to sleep, and there's no coffee. The humanity. I think we could build them somewhere to sleep, actually. Yeah, with a bed. I'm going to build this close-ish to our heater. Kind of an awkward spot because we can't produce more heaters yet, I don't think. Storage unit, repair station. This is power. You know, I think I was so focused on getting out in space, I thought about the necessities, which is like, are they freezing cold? <laughs> That's okay. All right. We are returning now to our ship with the uranium that they managed to mine up. Fantastic. They got some uranium, some silicon, some copper. And once they get back on the ship, we'll be able to take off and go towards another planet. So we should probably chart our course. Woo! We've got a star here, which is pretty cool. I don't know if we can get close to that star without completely burning up. We've got a couple of different planets of various size, but no information on what they are yet. So, you know, we'll have to take a look. Leontovich is definitely our closest planet, so we might want to check out Leontovich once our crew returns to the ship. Let's hook up this solar panel, which you can see our robot now cleaning off the panel and uh, and and making it so that we get the full three kilowatts of power from that. Wonderful. And I think 
our friend Aqua has stolen one of the beds and sleeping pod here and is and is getting some sleep. So that's good. Even though we made the bed for them and, and gave them an access to it, looks like they wanted to grab the sleeping pod and said, that's okay. That's all right. We should build a machine learning booth to train our workers' skills so they can build more complex devices. Our research just ended. Let's go ahead into the research tree. And I think we're going to need the heater. And maybe showers and toilets would be good. Let's, let's do showers and toilets, you know? And then we'll get heat. Because they do have a place for them to warm up around the heater already. Okay. Looks like our vessel just came back. Can I actually cancel this expedition? Is that possible for me to... Not sure. Doesn't look like it. They're heading back to Nantucket. I'm not sure exactly where we go to prevent that. Current expeditions. Nantucket. Call expedition back. Here we go. Cool. So their ship is going to come back and dock here, I imagine. Returning. Yep. From Nantucket. This planet looks crazy. Look at that. Those shapes kind of swirling around that. I don't even know what kind of planet that is, but... We did see the resources, the uranium and all the uh, the copper and silicon that we got put back in the storage unit. Our expedition ship is back. And I think that means we can go ahead and travel to a new planet. And that's pretty much the game. It is a lot like RimWorld in that there are random events that happen to your ship. You are able to, a little bit easier than in RimWorld, transport yourself from one place to another and find new things there's i imagine going to be if it isn't already in the game already ship to ship combat and different elements like that warfare between you and other factions and you are going to have a growing ship of of colonists as your stasis array pumps them out into your ship i'll say the game is a little bit finicky in early access you know, building this ship took me about an hour and a half to two hours. And then, you know, like we had to deconstruct different areas of the map that took a lot of real life time kind of sitting and waiting. And you'll notice that we have a whole bunch of colonists back here who died. All of these people died as we were building our ship. It's just something that you have to kind of accept is part of the game and part of the early access experience this might change as they develop themselves through early access as they you know improve the game and and move on to to different things i think stardeus is worth a look and it's something that if you really really like RimWorld and you really like space and spaceships you should definitely take a look into i'm going to be keeping my eye on this one as it works its way through early access and the development cycle. Super, super keen. Thanks again to Paradox Arc for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate the support. And to all of you, if you liked videos like this, taking a look at new indie games, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in our next video here on YouTube. See you then.